What's up everyone, Dylan here from AYCB and there was Minding My Own Business and Fantasy Flight Games goes and announces a brand new hero for Marvel Champions. Uh, this will be the first new hero after the Galaxy's Most Wanted uh, campaign box that we'll be getting in April. Um, and in, it is fittingly a Guardians of the Galaxy character. We're probably gonna be getting a line of these characters, I would imagine. Um, this is Star-Lord, Peter Quill, um, and the thematics in this game continue to just blow me away. How well they're able to tie the theme um, and the characteristics of the characters that are coming and hero packs into the cards that you're actually using. Uh, so Peter Quill, Star-Lord, is obviously a very reckless character that it always seems, his recklessness seems to pan out for him. Um, and the cards are gonna highlight that. So the big mechanic here is that you're gonna be purposely gaining encounter cards, extra encounter cards, to be able to take extra benefits on the cards that you're playing. So ties super well into the theme. I'm super excited about what we've seen so far. Another couple of cool things is we have the new Guardian uh, uh, trait. So like we had the Avenger trait and we had a whole slew of characters. This is the first one of the Guardian traits and there's a bunch of Guardian synergies in here, including the ability to actually make other allies that aren't Guardians into Guardians. Um, so that's really cool. And I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of that as these Guardian characters come out, um, as well as they, they are already in the uh, Galaxy's Most Wanted box, but this is one that's really tying into the synergies of it. Um, the leadership aspect is the uh, set of cards that's going to be tied to Peter Quill. Uh, obviously as the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, that makes a ton of sense. And another really cool thing is that they've said that there's going to be for every single aspect included a card that benefits from the aerial trait, which if you saw my video on on the Wasp uh, reviewing all those cards, there were already some cards in there that had to do with um, you know, gaining the aerial trait that you just really couldn't benefit off of and do anything with. I think the fact that they're adding in one for every aspect is going to add in a slew of deck building opportunities for other heroes that you can now potentially be mixing in things to do with the aerial trait and actually see some benefits from that rather than it just being a random keyword that's attached to a card. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into the cards that were revealed and I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts on them and some ideas I have based on them and then we will wait for the actual uh, hero to come out so I can dive in a little bit more in depth. So let's jump right in. Okay, let's start with the alter ego and the hero card, obviously. So this is Peter Quill. If you're unfamiliar with the Star-Lord character, he is, uh, that's the alter ego and he's one of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, standard three recovery, nothing uh, flashy there. Hand size of six, uh, hit points of 10, all pretty average across the board. Um, pretty cool. So during setup, you're actually gonna search your deck and discard pile for a copy of the Element Gun upgrade and add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck. Now, based on the article, um, it sounds like there's gonna be two element guns, which would make sense because Starlord always is dual wielding those element guns. So you'll be able to uh, search for one of them and add it into uh, your hand. Um, I don't know whether or not these element guns are gonna have the same uh, text or same abilities or whether each one is going to function differently. They actually didn't reveal the element gun aside from it being in the background of uh, one of the images. We can get, it. we know it costs three. That's what I can tell you. It costs three, um, it's restricted. It's, it seems like, I don't know whether it's gonna be restricted to only having two out for for both the, the dual wielding aspect of it, but um, there's something talking about restricted that we can see on the top of the card. Uh, as well, it seems to have something to do with exhausting it, potentially getting a resource discount and doing damage to something with piercing. We only can see half of the, or not even half, a quarter of the text on, on the element gun. So that's something we'll have to find out as more uh, information is revealed on it, but you will start the game with one of them in your hand. It's very similar to um, Captain America's shield, for instance, starting in your hand. So. Um, that's pretty cool. The actual ability is called Smooth Talker, which is really neat as an action limit once per round. Uh, you're going to be able to choose a card for, in your hand and swap it with the card on the top of your deck, which I think is pretty cool because very often you'll have a card in your hand that you either wish you drew later or like you just can't use it this specific turn, but it's a powerful card you don't want to just use as a resource or discard. You can now flip this back onto the top of your deck, delay it until your next turn, and get a new card that you could potentially use as a resource, or it could actually just be beneficial in its ability for you. So very, very very cool. I actually really like that ability. I don't know how powerful it is, but it's definitely a good utility that I could see myself using when I just really want to use the card for its actual actual ability, but just not this specific turn. Or I just have a useless card in my hand. I really want to try to get something a little bit better or, you know, pull draw into like an energy or, or a strength or something for the extra resources. So very, very cool utility card. Uh, I'm really excited to try it out. And then we go into Star-Lord. Um, so Star-Lord is two thwart, two attack, one defense, uh, hand size of five, hit points of 10. Um, pretty standard in terms of the hand size dropping down to by one. Um, average uh, thwart and attack, both, both at two is still good though. We've seen obviously lower than that. So 
good start. Um, each ally you control gains the guardian trait when you are in Star-Lord form. So this will turn all your allies into guardians. And since there's a lot of guardian synergy in here, and there will be across multiple heroes, I would imagine, uh, given the fact that we're entering this Guardians of the Galaxy point in the game, um, I think this will be super, super powerful as a, in, a, in a leadership deck where you can now convert all these powerful heroes into guardians. Um, the actual ability is called What Could Go Wrong? This is an interrupt very, very uh, sets the stage for the thematics around Star-Lord. Very powerful ability. When you play a card from your hand, you can choose to deal yourself one face down encounter card uh, from the villain's deck to reduce the resource of the cards you're playing by three, which that is insane. I mean, the amount of cards that powerful cards that cost three that, are that would now just be free, um, or that are, you know, cost four or five that you can easily play based on your hand size now. It just opens up so many po possibilities. Um, obviously, you're being dealt an encounter card. And one thing I'll say is that so much of Star-Lord, it's hard to gauge how powerful, how strong of a hero he's going to be because it fluctuates so much, it seems like, on the villain that you're playing. If you're playing a villain that has a very, very powerful and strong deck and you're dealing yourself, you know, two, three extra encounter cards every turn, that's super, super tough to overcome. And that could end up being a turning point in the difference in your game. If you're playing one that has a weaker, uh, a weaker deck, weaker encounter cards, or you're just getting lucky on the draws, suddenly these drawbacks don't seem that bad and you're just doing all these over the top things that your hero shouldn't be able to do otherwise. So it's gonna depend a lot on, on luck. It's also gonna depend a lot on the villain you're, you're facing. So a lot of this where, where I'm, I'm you know grading and going over it in a bubble right now without having the, the chance to play test. Um, but there's a definitely potential here. Um, reducing the resource cost by three is huge. You can only do it once per round, but every round being able to essentially get a really powerful free card um, is insane. So it'll be really cool to see just how powerful that is once we start seeing you know, how, ba how big the drawback is from getting all these extra encounter cards dealt to you. Next card we'll take a look at is one of the unique Star-Lord cards that are in his deck, and this is Daring Escape. Another powerful card, zero cost. Zero costs are always really, really interesting to me. Um, the hero action on this is that you deal yourself one face down encounter card from the villain deck uh, to ready your hero and draw a card. So we know that readying, like getting an extra a readying of your hero on a turn is super, super powerful, especially on a hero that has base two thwart and base two attack. Um, basically up in that to fourth ward or four damage on a turn is a huge deal. Um, the fact that all you're doing is taking a single encounter card is pretty good, but again, it's going to be very dependent on what your luck is in terms of what you're drawing, um, even how many players are in the game with you, uh, to, so that you know how many encounter cards are coming out in a round, um, and also what villain you're playing against. So it seems very, very powerful on paper, it's just going to be very dependent on how bad of a detriment these encounter cards are when there's these extra ones being dealt to you. Again, I think this is still very powerful. I, I don't think that it, that's very much of a drawback to ready your hero and draw a card on top of it. The fact that you're extending your turn, being able to play extra cards, because this one's free with that extra card draw, but also getting another turn with your hero, super powerful. I can't see this being a bad card. How good it is is just going to be dependent on how this drawing extra encounter cards uh, ends up turning out. So the next card is Sliding Shot, and this is where we get into um, another benefit of having encounter cards dealt to you. So it's not just that when you have them dealt, you trigger a really strong ability. It's also that the more you have in front of you, the more other cards that you play are going to benefit from th those sitting in front of your hero. So Sliding Shot is a three cost event that says you can only play it when you have uh, at least one element uh, element gun in, in play. So keep that in mind. You don't, you don't have to have both, uh, but again, and we don't, we don't know yet based on restrictions whether you can actually play both at the same time. Given the fact that he's a dual wielding hero, I think that's going to be okay. Uh, but you only have to have one in play. The hero action, which is an attack, is to deal five damage to an enemy, but you deal two additional damage to that enemy for each face down encounter card in front of you. So again, if you have three encounter cards in front of you based on what you've played, this is dealing 11 damage, which is insane, obviously, for three costs. So the power level is, is super high. The potential is super high on this card but again got to think about the fact that you're then having to deal with three encounter cards in the villain's turn so um, there's a definite flip side to everything you're doing with star lord it seems but again some of these cards you, you know if it fits it fits the turn that you're going to finish off the hero the villain by dealing 11 damage potentially you're not even seeing those encounter cards and, and having to reveal them after the fact so uh, there, there's a lot of power here another really really good card it seems i just again 
so much of what I what I say here is going to have this asterisk in front of it because I think in testing it's going to just remain to be seen how bad it is to have this many encounter cards be dealt to you when so much of what Star Lord is doing needs them in front of you uh, and needs them uh, to be active. Um, what I haven't seen yet and what would be very interesting is if there's cards in this deck that specifically discard encounter cards from in front of you. So um, you know even if, if there's a couple that say you know get rid of two of your three encounter cards you've dealt to yourself or half of them or one of them, whatever. Things like that to mitigate uh, the, the downsides for some of these cards. That would be a super, super powerful condition. Haven't seen that yet, but again, we haven't seen all the cards yet. So that's definitely very possible that there could be something like that uh, in the deck remains to be seen. But Sliding Shot is super, super cool. Seems very powerful. I'm excited to try it out. Next up is Star Lord's Helmet. We've seen these helmet cards in a lot of uh, of decks with the feature heroes um, that wear helmets. Um, this one is pretty good. Another one that benefits off of having the encounter cards in front of you, otherwise it's not really doing much. Um, so one cost upgrade, and when you are in hero form, you get plus one hand size for each uh, encounter card that is in front of you up to a maximum of three. So increasing your hand size by three when you're in hero uh, form would make it eight, which is a very, very big hand size obviously um, especially for a hero that has so many cards that they want to be playing and gets free cards every turn um, based on his his hero power um, so it's super powerful but again to hit that maximum of three hand size you're gonna have to have three encounter cards in front of you if you're consistently doing that and consistently dealing with three plus encounter cards in the villain's turn how much are you, how long are you actually surviving? How much are you actually able to do stuff on your turn when you're bouncing back from all the damage um, or, you know, the scheming that you've had to uh, take on the villain's turn? So a lot of things to consider. Um, even just getting one or two additional hand size here and there is still pretty good. I think you probably don't want to be hitting the maximum of, um, of three all the time just because of how much you're going to have to be dealing with. But again, that's something that remains to be seen in testing because um, maybe this deck, specific, this hero specifically, this deck specifically, um, and with, you know, a bunch of guardians out, um, potentially de deals with encounter cards way better than other heroes. And in that case, maybe it's not as much of a detriment. But either way, uh, Starlet's Helmet seems pretty good. Um, again, it just depends on how much you benefit from having the additional hand size. The fact that you're already with Starlet able to switch a card from your hand onto the top of the deck, um, um, and, and you know, flip them and potentially get one that has more resources or is more valuable valuable to you, and you're already being able to play a free card on your turn using Star Lord's main ability. I don't actually know how beneficial increasing your hand size is going to be. It seems like there's already a lot of options in the Star Lord deck um, to you know take your five card hand size and really stretch it to the limit with everything. Um, all the resources he has at his disposal. Um, so I don't know, I, it's hard to say how beneficial having the extra hand size is gonna be, whether it's worth the encounter cards. But if you already have the encounter cards in front of you because of other cards, why not benefit by increasing your hand size? It only costs one for the upgrade. So um, pretty cool card. I'm really interested to try it out. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, a card that ties into the leadership qualities of Star-Lord being the leader of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is Leader of the Guardians, fittingly. It's a three cost upgrade that uh, simply says each Guardian character you can control gets plus one thwart. Now remember when you're in Star-Lord um, hero form, um, all your allies have the Guardian trait. So this is just essentially when you're in hero form, every single ally you have has the Guardian uh, trait, which is great because uh, I'm sure the Guardian trait, uh, well, we know it ties into things obviously in the Star Lord deck, but with the Galaxy's Most Wanted, with um, the other uh, Guardians heroes, we're sure to see whether it be Drax or Gamora um, or whoever. I, I think that you're definitely going to see more synergy with Guardians and also more Guardian characters and more allies that you can uh, utilize in this. So um, pretty decent card. Um, plus one thwart to all of them is, is obviously very, very good, depending on how many allies you have out and depending how much you're utilizing it. It's a steeper cost of three, but not necessarily for Star-Lord because um, he can play essentially one card that costs three three uh, for free every round by taking an encounter card. So this could be a free play, your free play for a round. And at, if you factor that in as a zero cost, take an encounter card and all your care, guardian characters get plus one thwart, that's pretty damn good. So um, really interested to try this out. Ties in thematically, uh, pretty cool card. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next we actually have a basic card, but this basic card specifically uh, is tying into the synergy of the Guardian trait. So this is Nowhere, which is obviously a location uh, from the Guardians of the Galaxy comics, and you've even seen it in the uh, the MCU movies. Um, so this is a two-cost support 
that is play only when your identity has the guardian trait, which in Star-Lord's case, he absolutely does. Um, increase your ally limit by one. So again, benefiting from the fact that Star-Lord is a leadership ally who wants to have a bunch of guardians in play. Now you can have up to four. Um, the response on it is after a player plays a guardian ally, exhaust nowhere, and that player draws one card. So this is any player in your game. So if you're playing with someone else who's controlling um, a guardian character or has guardian allies in play, they're gonna benefit from this as well, potentially. Uh, they're obviously only able to do it once because you're gonna exhaust it to draw the card. But getting an extra card draw just for doing stuff you're gonna be doing in your, your leadership deck with guardians already is pretty damn good. The cost isn't too steep at two, and again, has the potential to be free in Star-Lord's deck specifically. Really cool to see a basic card with the guardian synergy because again, we're gonna be seeing a lot of guardian characters um, starting in April and onwards, where it's gonna be a whole slew of them. So the fact that this is a card that can be utilized across all those decks opens up a lot of deck building possibilities. I'm really happy that this is a basic card and I'm really excited to see uh, how powerful it can be in some of these decks getting that extra card draw on a frequent basis, especially, I guess, if you're playing in leadership decks where you're playing allies very, very often that have the Guardian trait. But I think even if you're not playing in leadership, there's going to be tons of allies that are introduced that have the Guardian trait that are going to be able to utilize this. So pretty cool card and really cool that it's a basic. And the final card that was revealed to us is a leadership aspect card um, that is called Blaze of Glory. It's two cost and max one per round. Fittingly, based on its uh, its title of Blaze for Glory, it's, this is an all out, uh, you know, last ditch effort, I would say. It's a hero action. Each guardian character gets plus two thwart and plus two attack. Uh, this phase only. At the end of the phase, deal one damage to each of these guardian characters, to, or to each guardian character in play. So um, that that would obviously be allies and heroes. So you're taking a bunch of damage across the board, one to every every character. But two attack and two thwart to each one for this phase is obviously a huge bump. If you have you know say nowhere in play and you're able to have four allies out and you've maxed that out and they're all all have the guardian trait because of Star Lord, that's essentially eight attack or eight thwart across all of them. Not to mention um, your own hero as well. So so add on another plus two to that. Not to mention if you're, you know, readying him for the, the first, a second time this phase because of uh, other cards you've used. So lots of potential here to have this huge, huge swing of a turn. Again, you're taking the damage afterwards and that might kill off some of your allies as well. So it's something you want to use sparingly or use in one of those moments where you just need to have a huge burst uh, of action. But very, very cool card. I could see this being very useful across multiple decks, especially because it's a leadership aspect card um, and not tied specifically to Star-Lord. Perhaps there are some other Guardian characters that, you know, I, I don't I don't think a lot of any of the other Guardian characters are likely going to come with the leadership aspect necessarily uh, attached to them because Star-Lord is the sole leader of the Guardians. But that, that that's just me guessing. I have no idea how, how they're going to tie things in thematically. I think they'll probably tie into, you know, having Drax's aggression and, and different things like that more so. But we've seen before that it doesn't mean you can't build really strong decks uh, in the leadership aspect with them anyways. And the fact that you can then utilize a card like Blaze for Glory, um, Blaze of Glory, I should say, um, is pretty cool. So very cool card. I'm very interested to see how this ties in and how it works with Star-Lord specifically, as well as other characters. And that is everything we know so far about Star-Lord. There's a lot of stuff I'm still very interested about and very curious about that I wish we would have found out more, but obviously that's the, the tease and the hook. Um, specifically, the, the way they talked about the aerial trait um, being utilized on at least one card from each aspect in this deck specifically. I'd love to see some of that, um, you know, before the actual deck comes out, because I'm, it, that might actually end up making it a very desirable pack for people to get, even if you're not interested specifically in the Star-Lord hero, but have some other heroes that just have, have underutilized utilized aerial traits that now potentially could benefit from the cards that are coming in this deck. So that'll be super interesting to see. Uh, likewise, I just want to know a little bit more about uh, his his element guns. Um, we haven't seen their full ability yet. I don't know whether they're different abilities, whether they're the same abilities. It could be something, you know, if one's giving you plus one attack in a situation, the other one could be doing the same thing, but they could stack on top of each other to give you plus two attack. I would imagine that they can both be in play at the same time because he's a dual wielding hero. I, I would be very, it would be very weird to have them restrict restricted only one at a time, but most of the abilities we've seen benefit from only needing one in play. Perhaps we'll see a card where you'll get an extra benefit if both are in play. That would be pretty cool. And, you know, having to strive towards having both of your element guns would be a really cool mechanic. Um, but I'm just also really curious to see how much more um, of this, you know, recklessness uh, uh, theme 
how much more, how many more cards really benefit from that and, and how powerful the abilities are depending on how many encounter cards you're getting. And I think in play testing, it's gonna be super interesting to just see how big of a detriment it is to have three extra encounter cards. You know, in playing heroic mode, um, that can obviously be, you know, the, the the swing that ends the game a lot of times if you get really bad cards. The fact that you're putting yourself through that every single round potentially uh, means you're gonna be playing a different style of Marvel Champions where you're always on edge. And that, that and you're, it could be, it's because of the recklessness, which again, ties super well into the theme. So very, very cool hero. I love that they're exploring new uh, new mechanics like this. They're still coming up with new ways to tie theme in in, in ways we haven't seen. Um, I cannot wait to get my hands on this. I'll obviously, when, when May rolls around, have my full review of all the cards and analysis on them. But in the meantime, look out for the Quicksilver uh, review and analysis, which will be coming out in the next week, I would imagine, because I should be receiving my Quicksilver pack. I'm going to dive in and do a whole bunch of playtesting, um, and then I'll bring you that. So look out for that. And in the meantime, um, if you like any other videos on our channel, if you are if you really like what we're doing, consider subscribing, liking, commenting. We, we love it all. We appreciate it all. We appreciate all the support so we can keep doing what we're doing. And I love Marvel Champions. It's one of my favorite games. So there's going to be a whole ton more Marvel Champions content coming on the channel. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.